you want to maybe tell us a little bit more about how your family built the company? Asia Green Group was actually founded by my father. He single-handedly built the group, uh, the holding company. So he, in 1995, he purchased this company called Asia Plywood. And that company was actually established in 1964. And at that time, it was a plywood manufacturing company. Hmm. And he actually grew the company and now is the biggest plywood manufacturing in the peninsula of Malaysia. Can you tell us a little bit more what that was like for you, like growing up with a dad that must have been extremely focused on work and then met with this incredible success? Growing up, I kind of understand things that he was involved in. But in terms of the scale of things, I actually had no idea until I joined the business. And even when I was in the business, it took me a long time until I really fully understand the sort of amount and the scale of things. So there were, I would say, knowing what he was doing kind of to learning about the business to then Mm -hmm. looking at the numbers. So, I mean, I would have done it slightly differently for my potential future kids, but yeah, I think, yeah, I think the way he introduced it, I think in a way it's good because then I taught to be very humble, right? Like I, I didn't know anything really. I was like, okay, well he has a business, but yeah. that's the end of the discussion, right? You have this image of a parent, right? Like growing up and there's a lot of respect and they do show you sort of like part of the work that they do. You understand what they're doing, but then you join them in the workplace. Did it change your relationship with your dad or did it like, you know, change your perception of what kind of a person he is or what he's good at and, and what sort of his, his strengths and weaknesses are? And actually same question for when your siblings started joining the business then afterwards. As the eldest, I was the first to join the family business. So I think my dad was also new to this. Not that he joined his father. So he created this and then I joined him, Mm -hmm. him being the first generation. So I remember going to work and I went into his office and I say, Mr. Tan, good morning. And he say, why are you calling me Mr. Tan? I am your father. And I was like, well, I'm not going to be calling you dad in the office. Does this work? And I am your daughter at home, but here I am one of the employees. So that was a very strange situation. And, you know, that goes to show you that my dad was not able to draw the line. Hence, our relationship got pretty, it definitely brought some damage to the relationship at the very beginning, because it was hard for him to say, hey, we're in the office and does this only work? work, work stays in the office. And when we go home, he, if he was unhappy with me in the office, he would bring that to the dinner table. Yeah. And that was difficult. I was like, okay, I've had enough today. I can, I just relax, have dinner and with my dad and not my boss, right? Like that's that. So that was one of the most, I say, challenging things that happened between us. And then on top of that, he had very high expectation. You know, he, yeah. so my dad didn't actually finish school so he quit school when he was 11 because he came from a very very poor background so then he sent me to school in the states and I had all this education of course he expected more from me and when I was not able to meet his expectation then he got very disappointed and then I got very disappointed with myself for disappointing my dad so that really was also very painful to me to go through and then when my siblings joined I think between me and my siblings was okay because we have we've always been very very close growing up and mm-hmm. being the eldest I've always played a protect you know the protector right so if something happened and my you know if my sister did something wrong or my brother did something wrong my my initial reaction is to go and protect them I eventually learned to let go I say it is their journey they have to learn I cannot keep pulling them back when they're about to fall, then they will never learn their lesson. Mm-hmm. So that was one of the tougher points. They, they have to grow up eventually and be their own person. So that was sort of, you know, it was tough. It was tough to watch, but at the same time, very, very proud of them today. I think you pointed out such an important thing, right? Like when you're the eldest child of founder, 
you are the first succession moment in the family business, right? How has that definition changed for you over the years that you've been active with the family, family business? When I first started working, I would say definitely in my 20s, well into my mid 30s, it has always been validation from my father. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not about what other people think of me. It's about what my father thinks about what I'm doing and how I'm doing. Is he proud? Is he mad? That's always been my questions. And like, the success is always like, I just wanted to hear from him that he's proud of me, right? That is that mm -hmm. validation that I was after. And that was my measure of success. As I started my own journey, I also start looking at numbers, the numbers in a bank account, right? Of course, that became very important, you know, making sure I'm feeding the team and everyone's like happy and, and well compensated. I would say now 10 years into things and now I'm turning 40, I think things have changed. My priorities have changed. And I think success to me now, it's like, how big of an impact am I making in people's mm -hmm. life? The people around me, the society that I'm in, am I bringing value? That's how I'm measuring success now. Nothing more rewarding than creating success as a family. But then I think you learn so much as well from striking out on your own and finding like, you know, your own fulfillment. When did it become apparent to you that you could actually do both, right? Like you could fulfill the responsibilities towards your, your family, but you could also sort of like, you know, look into industries that interest you, that make you passionate. And so when did that sort of like tipping point happen for you? I actually took a break from the family business and... I realize until I know and I'm confident that I have the confidence to take over the family enterprise one day, I'm going to have to go and earn it, right? Mm -hmm. So I moved here to Hong Kong, found a job selling private jets to the Chinese. I mean, it was it was an experience for sure. And, and China was, <laughs> you know, up and coming in private yeah. jets. I was like, oh my God, what am I doing? <laughs> but um, that helped me build my network in, in here in Greater China. So I'm very thankful for that experience. And then because of that, I got to meet one of my business partners who whom started the Whiskey Fund alongside. And so we managed to do that. And then because I know I've always been interested in, in finance and investing, because that's always sort of been my background. And so I wanted to do something and build a name for myself so that my dad could see me on a very different light. That was of a journey, but then in the middle of it all, my dad actually got ill. So I then <laughs> flew back home, I had a conversation with him. He said that, um, I still need your help. When will you be able to come home? I said that I'm in the middle of all this. I still have two more years until I am fully done with the fun. He said, okay, can you do it part-time then? So, mm -hmm. of course, I say yes. How was your mindset different joining the second time around? Definitely very different mindset. I think because I have now the experience of running my own business, I understand my debt a lot more. Mm -hmm. I was able to be more compassionate towards him when things do not go right or he get upset or like I, I now understand why he would be upset I mm -hmm. also made a conscious decision and say when he's upset I no longer want to fight I always say like anyone who's part of a family enterprise or a family business there's a lot of expectations from our families mm -hmm. from the from the business from society what do you do to manage these expectations i say this and i, I say that with with everything i do in life I, you have to be honest with yourself mm -hmm. there are going to be expectations that i got pushed on to you and you have to be honest and say okay can i do this can i deliver how would i feel how would that impact me and if i don't deliver how would that impact the other family members or mm -hmm. the people around me Sometimes, you know, I would say things and not everyone is pleased with the comments or, or my thoughts or, but eventually things work out. And I think you have to stay fairly consistent. And I guess you have to be very persistent in 
things you believe in. What do you think are sort of like the skills and the mindsets we need to bring to the family enterprise and, and any venture that we start in order to be successful today? I think in terms of new skill, we now need to use technology to help us to move forward. And a natural science is, is another thing, right? So I think there's two areas I've, I've been spending a little bit more time doing and putting more capital, fronting some of the up and coming companies, hoping to make an impact with our glooming, uh, our climate issues as well as, our, you know, the, the society, I mean, food shortage and all that is, is also very real. So hoping that we could solve that some kind of like issues there. I think having the emotional intelligence to be able to deal with people from all ages is probably like, I would say, one of the most important skills to learn and be able to deal with scientists and yeah, I guess the tech bros, if you, if you will. Any advice? for, you know, family business members out there as to how to make a success of it or how to know when to leave? Once you know that emotionally and mentally you're not in a good place, you know that it's time to take a break. And there's nothing wrong about taking a break. In the Chinese saying, right, like a break is meant for a longer journey ahead. That's mm -hmm. direct translation. So, yeah, don't be afraid to take a break. I mean, you will know when your body, your mind and your heart sometimes will need a break. 